Today we have uh, Miss Angela Johnson with us. She's been with Mecklenburg County for more than 25 years and has primarily worked in the areas of both land records management and address management. Miss Johnson has extensive business knowledge toward address management, which relates to its requirements for next gen I-1-1. Her work group works very closely with very public, various public safety agencies, including police, fire, and medic, including county code enforcement, who administers building permits and certificates of occupancy. We also have Mr. Todd Wilson. Uh, he's the GIS Tech Solutions Manager. Mr. Wilson has been with Mecklenburg County for more than 25 years and has primarily worked in the areas of GIS technology management, specifically application development and database administration. Mr. Wilson has been a certified GISP professional since 2004 and also has a master's in GIS technology from North Carolina State University. Uh, for those that are attending virtually, make sure your names are fully spelled out. Uh, just enter your questions down at the chat. We'll address the questions the last five or so minutes of the presentation. Ms. Angela, it's all yours. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for attending this presentation of addressing, of course. I'm Angela Johnson. I work for Mecklenburg County as the addressing manager uh, for land records and addressing. <clears throat> I'm gonna talk about the business side of addressing. Sorry about that. About us, Mecklenburg County, North Carolina GIS addressing team. We consist of one GIS addressing analyst who maintains our addressing and row center line for next, G next gen 911. She submits that data in for us um, on a regular basis. We have one senior GIS technician and five GIS technicians. Our responsibility is to sign addressing and maintain row center line block ranges for all of Mecklenburg County, including city, city of Charlotte, and seven and six small towns. Fact check, we are one of the two largest counties in North Carolina with a population of 1.12 million people. Historically, for the past, for the last five years, currently we have a total site address as of today, 637,231 and counting. <laughs> New addresses created for the last five years. As you notice, the numbers have changed. In 2003, the market, housing marketing slowed down, most likely due to higher mortgage interest, interest rates and decrease in demand for new housing. I do know that recently, the city council approved a budget for affordable housing because they see that the um, need for housing and then too with rates increasing, they're now gonna build development for those who can afford. In 2021 and 22, COVID, as COVID restrictions, as in, as COVID restrictions were lifted, new development increases, as you see the numbers in 2021 and 2022, business began to pick up and plus the interest rate was at a good time at a lower time at that moment. 2020, COVID effect, development, causing new development to slow down. A lot of business started shutting down. People were pulling less permits. As you know, it changed everything. So the numbers started getting less. The types of address requests that we typically get on a day-to-day -day is usually like unit number addition, you know, like suite numbers for high-rise apartments. Um, we get a lot of those and like um, new development for new construction, single family and mixed use. We also get facility asset requests for retaining walls, meters, ADUs, accessory dwelling units. We were seeing a lot of that in, happening in Mecklenburg County, bus stops and et cetera. Existing applications that we use for addressing management. We use Adobe. We used to um, do paper maps and edit, but now we use Adobe, which is better because it's digital. <laughs> so we use Adobe to address, edit, digital approved site maps. We also use the digital street file dictionary 
where we maintain street names. That's where we keep all, we store all our street names. And ArcMap for address point and road center line management, which will be replaced next, which will be replaced of Arc Pro next year to the address management ver version. Where we were before the new online. So in the beginning, we were using Excel spreadsheet. The problem with using these Excel spreadsheet tracking was that we're not able to measure the life cycle of a project from, from start to finish, keeping track of when it, when it started and when it's finished, because usually our turnaround is three to five business days, so we had no way of knowing when it was overdue. Limited tracking, the spreadsheet did not track facility assets that I just mentioned. It did not track that, it only tracked new development where there was new parcel creation involved. Staff performance, as you know, as a manager, you, when it comes to review time, you want to be able to measure your staff performance, how many jobs they were assigned. There was no way to where I could track that accurately. Duplication, which is one of our biggest problems because you know that developers, they're in a hurry, they wanna get their permits. So if they can't get the one staff, they'll find another one. And then when the staff that they call originally, is like, it's already been done. It's like, it's double work. And we was like, this is a problem. You know, duplications of work. Okay. We need a solution that does the following. After we talked, the staff and I talked, we was like, we just need to find a solution, how we can track all these things to prevent duplication, to, you know, so we can better serve our customers and our business process. So we needed something that would track all projects and the number address assignment requests, track the life cycle of a project from start to completion, and a gatekeeper to prevent duplication of address assignment requests and to measure staff performance and the number of assigned jobs. And the answer was the workflow manager in which Todd would come up to speak on. 